Today we will uh, discuss the design procedure that we follow for the journal bearing. So before we start the design procedure, uh, I am going to follow the data handbook written by Mahadevan and Dr. K. Balaveda Reddy. So that is the one which I am going to use. But the same procedure can be used with any data handbook. There will be slight change in the equations uh, and substitutions also there can be some changes. So kindly uh, understand the step and try to use uh, the data handbook which is available with you. Now moving forward, uh, what exactly are we supposed to design here in a general bearing? Because we said that general bearing is a, it's the one which provides a bearing action uh, in a hydrodynamic manner. So it is otherwise called as hydrodynamic bearing. Now uh, in the design of machine elements one we have learned how to design a shaft, uh, rivets, weld and all those physical parts, physical dimensions we have designed. Now the question is what about the case of a general bearing? What physical dimensions are we supposed to design? The answer is we are not designing any physical dimension. Instead we are selecting an oil. That is the most important thing that you should keep in your mind. Okay. So selection of oil and checking its suitability is nothing but the design procedure. That is the uh, totality of the design procedure. So we our focus is completely in that aspect. We are not designing any, any physical size or the outer diameter or the inner diameter. No, we are not focusing anything like that. Instead, we are focusing only on the lubrication, whether it is able to provide sufficient lubrication for a particular application. That's the point of discussion. Now, keeping that particular point in your mind, let's move forward to the uh, design procedure. So, let's discuss the basic nomenclatures that we use in the general bearing. So, this is a general bearing where we have uh, a shaft which is whose center is located at some distance from the center of the bearing and that difference is called as the eccentricity. eccentricity. So, that eccentricity is probably expressed by the letter E. So, E is expressed by eccentricity. And we have the diameter of the shaft as small d, length of the shaft as L. All these contribute to the physical dimensions. And we have capital C which is the bearing characteristics number and we have the small c as the radial clearance. We have got uh, another thing called as the radial clearance ratio. Two things are there, diameter clearance ratio is there and radial clearance ratio. C by R is called the radius clearance ratio and, and C by D is called as the diameter clearance ratio. These two terms we will discuss in the coming uh, steps. Uh, so right now you just get familiar with these uh, terms that we use. And when we look at the pressure distribution of the uh, general bearing, we can see that uh, the uh, exactly at the location of minimum film thickness, we cannot expect a maximum version. Instead, it is located at some different points. Now, the amount of thickness or the thickness of the oil that is available between the shaft and the bearing is called as the H minimum. But here, the minimum film thickness is denoted by H naught. So, this is denoted by H naught. And H is called as the oil film thickness. Oil film thickness means it is a general term. But H0 is a specific term that corresponds to the thickness of the oil, uh, the minimum thickness that is available between the shaft and the uh, bearing. Now we have got small n, which is the speed of the journal in RPS. We have capital N, which is in RPM. We have pressure in mega Pascal. Mega Pascal either is otherwise equal to Newton per mm square. The conversion should also be there in your mind. Then we have sum of field number, ambient temperature uh, and load, load unit is Newton. And another two uh, important thing that you should keep in your mind is these two terms, which is the absolute or the dynamic viscosity and the kinematic viscosity. So basically kinematic viscosity is equal to dynamic viscosity divided by density. This is the general formula that we know. So, these two terms are substituted in the uh, units Newton second per meter square and meter square per second. So, before we move into the design procedure, I want to make one thing very clear, which is nothing but 
If you have got any kind of confusion regarding the units that is being used in this data handbook, the answer is kindly refer the index page. That means this particular page is going to give you all the units that's being used in this data handbook. So whenever you go for a substitution, you have to make sure that the terms have the unit which is provided in the index. Sometimes, for example, sometimes the answer will be some kind of uh, joules or joules per second something like that that's what we are going to get the answer but if you look at the uh, equation uh, and substitutions we might be substituting it everything in mm and you might be wondering how this mm is can, can be converted into joule some kind of confusions will be there so there is no need to worry about any of things any of those things because in this data handbook the equations are being formulated keeping the correction factors also so you don't need to correct anything, you just need to substitute in the specified format. Again, I am stressing on that word specified format. So the units are being specified here in this index and substitute it like that. So don't worry about any kind of uh, unit conversions. Okay, everything is taken out by the equation itself. Now, now let's move forward and let's discuss about the first step. So in the initial step, what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to select an application. Sometimes they will specify the application. Sometimes they may not. So if they have specified the application, we will go to the table 15.7 in the page number 366. We have a lot of applications. These are just four. And the page is dedicated to these different types of applications. And this gives the general uh, maximum working pressure. For example, if you consider the uh, marine steam engine, the usual maximum pressure is in the range of 3.4 to 4.1, 10.3. So the main shaft, the crank pin, wrist pin, all these are working in different, different pressure. And the unit is also being given here. And the usually suitable viscosity is in the, this range also for this particular application. And the minimum value of is done by P is given like this. These values are being given. And C by R ratio, L by D ratio, everything is provided here. So what are we supposed to do is that if they have given some application, you go to the table 15.7 and note down C pressure value, C by R value, L by D ratio and minimum is done by P. So, so this value you have to note down. This value you have to note down these four values you should not know. Doesn't mean that you should use this value. You should not use this. No, we can use these values also. So what I want to convey is that even even though I'm giving you a, a specific procedure, it doesn't mean that this procedure can be used to solve any question. No, that's not what I mean. What I want to do is that you just follow this procedure, try to solve some questions and when while doing that, Make sure that you have a deep knowledge about the equations, the way in which is being substituted in the data handbook. That is what I want you to gain from this. So once you are very familiar with this data handbook and the way in which the data are arranged, then it's easy for you to grab those data and to alter the, in the same procedure. So this alteration is, is inevitable because at some point of time, this entire design procedure has to be shuffled and you have to go by your own. So in order to do that, you should have a good grip on the data handbook and the tables. Okay. So for the time being, just consider it like this. You know down the pressure, C by R, L by D ratio and minimum value of E7 by P. That's the initial thing we have to know. About. Now in the second step, in the second step, now uh, another doubt may come. Uh, we have got a range of values. For example, if you consider the gas and oil engines, you have, if you are considering the main uh, bearing, then 3.4 to 5.5 is the range given. So, you can select anything in between. You can select 5, you can select 4, you can select 4.5. It's completely up to you. There is no limit in that. Okay. Similarly, when you consider the LBD ratio also, you can take anything in between. No problem. Okay. Now, moving forward, we have the step number 2. So in the step number two, we are going to calculate the pressure, length, diameter using the given data and table 15.7. So here you may get some confusion. What I want to tell you is that 
even though you have taken up a pressure here i have asked you to calculate the pressure see the questions can be of can be different can be given in a different different format for example sometimes they will give the value of w sometimes they will give the value of d diameter of the journal these two they will give so the general equation to calculate the pressure is p equal to w divided by l into d right now see if you have these two data you are supposed to calculate the value of l and p you have got two different options to calculate the value of l one is that you take a pressure value from this for example 3.4 say 3.4 equal to so so say the load is something like uh, 1000 newton divided by we don't have the value of l but we have the value of d for example say this is 50 so the only unknown is what l we can find the value of l this is one methodology or in other words i can say that instead of assuming the value instead of uh, uh, substituting it like this you can select okay uh, you can select the l by d ratios suppose they have not specified anything regarding d they have given only the value of w they have not specified the value of d for example if w is specified w is given no d no l is given then what you will do you take the l by d ratio for example let's say for the main bearing the value of l by d ratio is in the range of 0.7 to 1.5 so i am going to assume it as equal to 1 1 means what l equal to d this is the assumption so see in the same manner you um, select the pressure value say 3.4 3.4 is equal to 1000 divided by l into d we have l into l so it can call it as d square in this manner we can calculate the value of l and d so what you need to do is that using this equation and based upon the given data you have to calculate the value of pressure length and diameter or in other words i will say that after the step 2 or by the end of step 2 you should have the value of pressure with you you should have the value of length and diameter with you this is must for for that you have to select the data accordingly that's the only thing i want to convey in this step okay so even after finding out the value of l and d we can also correct the pressure also there is no issue in that but anyway this step is mandatory and in this step we are supposed to come, uh, find out the value of pressure length and diameter now moving forward uh, we have the step number 3 so from here onwards uh, we are going to uh, we are going to jump into the design the actual design of the journal where uh, we are going to select the oil this is one of the most important things selection of oil so in order to do that what i will do is i will go to the table number 15.1 in the page number 363 i have given a, a list of oils say 10 20 30 40 4 uh, high speed transmission oils say 160 like that they have given different set of oils and most importantly they have given a set of numbers here these are not the serial numbers these are called as a curve number this is the curve number curve number okay so sometimes in the question they will give you the type of the oil that has to be used in that case there is no need to use this table because they have already specified the oil they have already selected the oil only thing is that we just need to calculate whether that particular oil is suitable or not and we are not supposed to uh, go for any kind of selections and we use this table 15.1 only when we don't have a oil in the question or they have not specified the oil in the question if that is the question then in the, we have to use the table 15.1 to select the oil right now you can select any oil based uh, from this for example if you are taking si30 say uh, this is the uh, one which i am going to select so uh, so my selection is si30 so this is the uh, one which i am going to select so the curve number is f and i will not down the density at specific gravity at 15.5 which is equal to 
0.9263. This is just an example, okay? Just for you, you to understand in a proper manner, I am taking this as an example. So don't think that always you have to go for it. No, it's not like that. So from this table, we have to note down the curve number and the density at 15 point. This is a specific gravity. It means that this is a specific gravity measured at a temperature of 15.5. Our operating temperature may be, com may be completely different. Right? In after this, after getting this, uh, not, not noting down these values, what we are supposed to do is we have to go to the figure 15.3 in the page number 352. And that's not given here. Uh, I, I'll, I'll show that. Okay, so this is the uh, figure. Okay, look here. So this is the figure. So right now we have already a, uh, concluded that the curve number is F, right? Curve number is F. So you can see that here we have got a set of curve A, B, C, D, E, F, and this is the curve that we are going. We are talking about. This is the curve we are talking about. Right now, if you look at this curve, we can see that uh, the temperature is in the degree centigrade in the top x-axis and in Fahrenheit in the bottom x-axis. Usually, we are going to uh, use the temperature in degree centigrade, and this value is mandatory. What is the operating temperature of the oil? That is must, and if not given, you are supposed to assume that. That's another thing. If not given. If not given, we have to assume. Say some 60 or some 50 or 70, something like that. We have to assume. So if we assume a temperature, what we are supposed to, for example, if we are assuming example, if we are assuming it as 60 degrees centigrade, this is the operating temperature that we uh, have assumed. So what we'll do from here 60, if you drop down to the curve. F, we can say that it is going to touch us this particular point, right? From here, I will extend to the right hand side. You may wonder why it is in the, why it's not been taken in the left hand side. You can take that also, because if you are going to take it in the left hand side, it is going to fetch you the value of viscosity in Seibold's universal seconds. And here we are going to get it in Cindy stock. That is all the difference. So right now I am going to get the value uh, or take take out the value uh, in the unit of Cindy stock. So if you look here, we can say that 30, 32, 34, 36 like that. So say 34. So we get go to less 34 CST Cindy stock. This is the kinematic viscosity ZK. So we have to note it down like this. So if you are taking a curve H corresponding to the temperature, you will get a value here. If you take the curve i, you will get a value here. That means as the curve number increases, the viscosity also increases. You can not not that. And if the curve number goes down, the viscosity also decreases. That's an important observation that we should uh, uh, keep in our mind. So right now we have a spe specific, it's not specific, but the kinematic viscosity as 34 cs for some particular temperature. Right now, let's see how the conversion is being done. Now, what we will do is that uh, we have go, we got the value of ZK as uh, 34 CST. Right now, we are going to convert it. Look here, this is how we are going to convert it because we need the value your value of Z. We need the dynamic viscosity because that is being used everywhere. So, dynamic viscosity is the one which we have to obtain. So, in order to get that, you see here. So these two equations, that means equation 15.1c and 1d, they are used to convert when we obtain a value in Seibold universal seconds, which is the left hand side of the curve. And you look here 15.1e and f, they are being used to find out the dynamic viscosity when we obtain the value in Zk. Right now we've got the value as Zk in the stock. But here you have to uh, do some conversion because we have learned from the index that Zk, the substitution unit should be meter square per second. Right now, 
our asset k value is in cst centi stock now you look here now you look here the conversion is that one centi stock is equal to 10 to the power of minus 6 meter square per second right so if you are going to use this equation z is equal to rho into zk rho into zk this has to be in meter square per second then what you need to do is you have to multiply it with 10 to the power of minus 6 before you substitute it over here okay and this density there can be a confusion it is because here this has to be in kg per meter cube and what we have note down is that rho 15.5 which is equal to some 0.943 something like that this is a specific gravity this is not the density if you want to obtain the density you have to multiply this specific gravity with 1000 that is a standard procedure right so the actual density is how much 943 kg per meter cube but see our operating temperature T is 60 degrees centigrade. Operating temperature T is 60 degrees centigrade. And here the density we have calculated only in 15.5 degrees centigrade. That means when the temperature goes from 15.5 to 60, definitely there will be a change in the viscosity. A viscosity will change. Now so when the viscosity changes, we have to use that new viscosity for the calculation. Or the density will also change, we have to take the new density. In order to do that, we are using this particular equation. Look here, this one. Here, this is the value we have selected from the table. And this is the equation that we have to use. For example, 60 degree, if you are, if you are supposed to find out the value at 60 degree, you substitute here 60 instead of T degree centigrade substitute at 60 degree centigrade. Then you will get the specific gravity of the oil. That is the most important thing. It's the specific gravity of the oil. It is not the density. So if you want to get the density, you have to multiply this value with 1000. That is not given in the data handbook. It is a common sense. So specific gravity multiplied 1000 will give you the value of actual density. Right? This is how you have to get the value of E set. It's a very important step because if you make a mistake here, the entire calculation is going to be wrong. So this is the next most important step. So and right now we have calculated all the uh, value of E z E z value. Now what we are going to do is we are going to check whether this particular oil is suitable for the application. So how the suitability is being uh, calculated? just by looking at whether we have a thick film lubrication that means whether it is coming in this zone that's what we uh, hydrodynamic lubrication so this is the uh, area of uh, thick film lubrication thick film lubrication so this point c is considered as the design lower limb so everything should be beyond this point if our calculated value of bearing characters is number mu n by p. So I will put it as Ez n by p. Ez n by p. This is the value. So if this Ez n by p is greater than this design lower limit, definitely it is going to fetch us a thick film lubrication. That's what we are going to calculate. So what we will do is we will substitute in the equation Ez n by p. We have calculated the Ez value. We have the n value and we have the p value. So, if the calculated value is written by P is greater than the minimum, because we have already noted down the minimum value of written by P required. So, if it is greater, then the selected oil will provide us the thick film lubrication. Will give thick film lubrication. So, is that done by P? Is that done by P? calculator should be greater than is that n by p minimum for the time being you can consider it like that but actual in actual practice it is this it is 3 3 k 3 c that means it has to be greater than three times the minimum value that is the actual design procedure but still if it is greater 
then also we can consider that it is in the uh, safe zone or it is, provides us a thick film lubrication but the actual design practice if, if you are going for an exact design it has to be exactly 3 so this limit is 3 ok so this is the EC value capital C value so this this is this is this satisfies then definitely the selection is ok we can move forward with the oh, this particular oil now the question is what if it is not ok what if it is uh, less then definitely you have to select a different oil and you have to uh, recalculate all these steps you have to select a new uh, new curve you have to select a new uh, density the viscosity you have to convert that into dynamic viscosity and you have to check whether it is going to fetch you some uh, thick film lubrication right so right now we have selected the oil and we have calculated the suitability of the oil now this is suitable so that is the conclusion we are going to make here now let's see what are the uh, what all things happens uh, when we uh, use this particular uh, oil in order to do that uh, we will calculate the sommer field number or the bearing gases number so equation is given here uh, r by c all square into z n by p newton to the power of minus 6 this r by c ratio usually they will give it in the question or else you can use the r by c value from the table because that's always in the same range uh, there will not be any kind of variation so you can use either 15.6 a or b based upon the side leakage condition right and after calculating the sum of field number what you will do is we will calculate the coefficient of friction we will calculate the coefficient of friction by using two methods there is no need to use two methods you can use any of these two that means either you can go with the figure or you can use the equation that means here you have a figure this is the figure 15.7 and here is the equation 15.4b 15.4a is the Petrov's equation 15.b is the Mackey's equations so you can use this Mackey's equation because all these values we have is that we have small and look here it is small and here small n means it is should be an RPS it's not capital N and P we have calculated R by C into the power of minus 10 plus delta R. so delta F value is 0 0.002 K value is also given here you can use this equation also no issue or else you can use uh, this curve so we have calculated the value of S R by C the whole square into certain by P to the power of minus 6 and for example say it is 20 and beta means full general bearing means beta is equal to 360 so what we will do for example if it is 20 from here we will plot a here and it will meet here and from here we are going to extend it and say it is 5 so how will we calculate the value of friction look here if it is 5 we can say that 5 is equal to r by c into f this one f is the coefficient of friction so we have the r by c value and f can be obtained as 5 divided by r by c this will give you the value of f this is one these are the two different methods that we can follow to calculate the value of coefficient of friction now moving forward uh, we have to calculate the minimum film thickness the same methodology we have already calculated the s value minimum film uh, bearing gases number based upon this for example if it is 20 from here we will extend up to uh, the full general bearing for partial general bearings it will be beta will be 180 160 130 like that that will be given in the question so here we will calculate the uh, say uh, for example if it is 20 from here we will extend it here and we will get it something like this. that means the value is something 0 0.92 say 0 0.92 so it will be equated with H0 by C right so H0 will be equal to 0 0.92 into C so we have R by C ratio with us we have the value of R so we can calculate the value of C and this C has to be substituted here to find out the H0 value so this will be in the range of microns, micro level, 10 to the power of minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, like that. In that range it is because the thickness of the film is very, very, very minute. So you cannot expect this in the range of mm, millimeters, no. It is very far less than the uh, millimeter range. 
okay so that value should also be there in your mind that range of value should also be there in your mind so and finally now we have got the final step which is the heat dissipation of the bearing to in order to do that we will do one thing we will calculate the heat generated using this equation f w v so f we have already calculated coefficient of friction w is the load we know and v is the velocity velocity the velocity is equal to pi d n by 1000 n is in the rps d is in mm and if you, this is equation is there in data handbook don't worry so if you substitute it over here you will get the value of heat generated right now we have to calculate calculate the value of heat dissipated for that you can use equation 15.11b or 15.11c it's up to you if you are using 15.11c it has to be kp into ld into the power of minus 6 l and d we already know the values and kp kp can can be obtained from here tb is the bearing temperature ta is the ambient temperature ambient temperature usually we take it as 20 25 degrees centigrade and bearing temperature we can take it as 80 or something like that 80 70 something like that so using that substitution uh, we will get the value of kp and kp here we have a small kp value small kp uh, value is also given here okay so this is how we calculate the value of heat generated and heat dissipated now comes the most important step in this design which is the heat balancing of the bearing so what is the heat balancing answer is this if if heat generated is greater than heat dissipated we need need cooling if heat generated is less than heat dissipated then it's safe this is the conclusion so just by looking at the heat generated and dissipated we can say that whether this bearing is in a stable condition or not so if we need cooling so what is the amount of heat that has to be removed the answer is hg minus hd this is the amount of heat that has to be removed how can we remove this by circulating the what mcp delta t so m is the mass flow rate of water which we are supposed to uh, circulate to cool down to take down, take out this um, uh, this heat cp is a specific heat of the water and delta t is a temperature difference that we assume say 40 degree centigrade or 50 degree centigrade or some 25 degree centigrade anyway assume this and get the value of m the m gives us the mass flow rate of water which we need to circulate through the bearing to absorb the excess amount of heat so this is how we calculate the uh, heat balance of the general bearing and finally we will calculate the flow rate of the oil uh, step is very simple we have already have the value of uh, s yes. uh, so from here we will project to the corresponding curve and we will take the value here and for example if it is 3 we will equate it to q by rc nl it's given here by rc nl so what we need is the value of q so you cross multiply this with 3 into rc nl so don't think that it's always 3 this 3 is obtained when i use the value of 20 so whatever might be the value that you obtain for your corresponding question that has to be used for the calculation of q by rc nl so from here you calculate the value of q and thereby we can conclude the design right so this is a general procedure so this is not the only procedure that we have we can follow this is a very one of the procedure that we follow and you um, you try to understand the different curve and the uh, tables given in the data handbook so that when there is a change in the data given we can alter the design procedure for so the next class i will solve one question and uh, by that you will be able to have a you will get a clear cut idea about the design thank you